So, Roman Bliński, like I heard that from today you're a Polish citizen, so how does it feel to be Polish? <laughs> Honestly, it's an incredible feeling. It's been something that I've been waiting for for a few months, but now to finally become a Polish citizen is absolutely amazing. And where do you come from originally? Um, so, where I was born? Yes, and okay. where do you live as well? Ah, so, um, I was born in England, uh, specifically London, uh -huh. and uh, currently I live in a few places as in racing I don't I feel like you can say I live in one place because you're always going to a uh -huh. new country. Um, but yeah, it's all over I guess you could say. So why, why have you decided to, decided to like became a Polish citizen? What's the story behind that? I mean, I've got um, Polish in my history, um, in my family, and it's something that's really important to me. And for sure, over the years, I've been learning more about Poland, um, learning more about my family and things like this. And the support I've been getting is absolutely incredible. And I felt like it was really important for me to bring this forward. Yeah, so like you have also a Polish name and Polish surname. Uh, yes. That was the story behind that. I think your father left Poland uh, when he was younger. Yes. Um, so my first name, my I, my mum chose it, and well, obviously my mum and dad chose it from someone else in our family that was called Roman. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in the Polish side of our family. And so, yeah, this is how I got this name. And so, and your s second name, how, how is it to have like a Bilinski second name when you're uh, raised, ra risen up in the UK? Honestly, uh, I quite liked it because it's, it's different. Um, I, I've, always, I've always liked it and I'm proud to have it, so yeah. Uh -huh. And what's your nickname? Uh, lots of people call me Romsky. Uh -huh. Or just Rom, uh -huh. um, but yeah, I think the Romsky is like a part of the surname and yeah. my first name. So yeah, <laughs> and then the ski like sounds very Polish. Probably, yeah, probably to the, uh, exactly. British. Yeah. Uh, so how old are you? Currently eighteen. Eighteen. Yes. And what is your exact birthday? Fourth of March, two thousand and four. Fourth of March. Okay. So how did you become a race driver? When was it when you started to race? So I started, my first year in karting was 2017 and the story all really started when my dad went to go buy a car and I was speaking to the salesman of the car and I was basically saying my dreams to become a Formula One world champion and things like this, just saying my love for motorsport and how I've always wanted to be in it and he um, just by coincidence knew the Brabham family and the Brabham family obviously in Formula One absolute legends um, and he put a he basically told my father and myself that we're gonna get a phone call from them in 30 minutes or so when I told my dad he didn't believe me as I like, of course this is what most people say and all this um, but 30 minutes later we got a call saying we'd like to meet you and honestly it went from there and now we're here so yeah so what did you do in your first year because you started very late for the motorsports extremely late I did Honda Cadets uh, which is a, a lower type of karting a bit slower um, this is all I could do at my age what sort of uh, engine um, so we've got a Honda GX 160 uh -huh. um, Quite unusual for cutting. It was like 30 horsepower, something like this. Uh, no, less, less, uh, less. I don't know specifically how much, uh -huh. but it was yes. less, I believe. Um, but in our first season, we went to kind of local circuits. So I didn't really get so much um, practice as most people had, but it was good. We won a championship and. So from there we progressed straight into cars. Uh -huh. Straight from the Honda? Straight from Hondas. Okay. Um, what which course? is very unusual because yeah. most people are in karting, they start very small and progress and then go Formula 4. Uh, whereas we went to Ginetta's straight away, uh, which is a, a car, and then from Ginetta's F4 and now F3. Okay, so like the, the next step was basically racing cars, not the single-seaters. Yeah, um, it was all... 
my focus was always a, to be a Formula One world champion and always single seaters. But um, we was advised to do this route, and this is uh, we believed yeah. we believed in it, and this is the route we took. So yeah. Yeah. And how was it in Formula Four? Like huge change <laughs> from Jeanette? Huh? Yeah, huge change. I mean, you suddenly go from road tires to slicks, downforce. It was absolutely crazy. I remember my first test with Arden. Um, and the feeling to drive a single seater on the limit was absolutely incredible. So yeah, it's a lot. It's very different, but I really enjoyed it. And how did you do in F4? Uh, British F4, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, British F4 first season was, I guess you could say it was average. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I didn't do a lot of testing, as this is when um, COVID came out, uh, and there was a. There was a, not so much a ban, but a time where you couldn't test, could test, and um, unfortunately we barely tested before the season. So I was a little bit more inexperienced, but by the end of the season we were quite strong, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you switched to British Formula 3, which is now GB3. So I think it was a huge step again from Formula 4. Yeah, another huge step. So much more power, naturally aspirated, um, huge amounts of downforce on really cool tracks. And this for me was a really good half season because we only did half a year. Um, and honestly, I was very happy with my performance because in the 15 races we got eight podiums, three wins, and was looking really competitive. And if we did the full championship, who knows what could have happened, but it was really competitive. So I guess you've shown some progress. Uh, yeah. Promise. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a really good season uh, against some really talented drivers that are now in uh, FIF3, Freca with me and things like this. So I was very happy with the season, but yeah. So now you're doing Freca. What's the characteristic of the series? Um, in terms of how the car drives? Or? Yeah, compared to Formula to GB3. Um, I mean, first of all, just the, again, the competition goes up. Now we've got 38 cars on the grid, whereas last year we had 21. Um, so a lot more cars, a lot more competition, but overall you just have to keep pushing. Freck, I've, I've realized, well, I've realized this in motorsport all the time. You have to be pushing 100%, 100% all the time mm -hmm. because as soon as you don't, there's someone else that is and you need to be making those improvements where no one else can. And how's the season so far? Um, I'd actually say we're progressing a lot now. The start of, the, I'd say the first two rounds were difficult. We showed a lot of pace, um, but just putting it together was tough. But now we're really starting to get everything together. And I think we can give a really good challenge in the second half of the season. Uh, so what's the goal for the season? Um, I'd say, as always, like you want to, you want to be winning races. You want to be winning championships. Because if I was a racing driver who didn't, this wouldn't be normal. Um, but I've also got to be realistic. It's my first season in the championship. Trident's first season. So as long as we can progress to be at the front by the end of the season, I think this would be a very good result. Mm -hmm. And how's the team you're driving for Trident, which is like very reckoned? Uh, team in the world of motorsports, how does it work for you? They're an extremely good team. I'm very honored to drive for a team like Trident. Obviously, they won the FIA F3 Constructors Championship last year, so they've shown themselves to be a top team. They've improved the F2 car massively this year as well, so it's, it's very nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, what are your favorite circuits? Kind of a circuit, let's say. Uh, that are race on this year, or just in general? Overall, like in general. I'd have to say Spa's up there, as I won there last year. It's an incredible uh -huh. track, and the feeling of winning there was so nice. And wow, it's that's a really hard question. I'd love to, I'd love to drive at the Poznan circuit. Um, this is a big dream of mine. 
and Poznan? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully soon I can. It's not like, you know, not, 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 not much of a spa in there, you know? <laughs> no, but I think the character of the track is really nice. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was there a few days ago, just the feeling of being there was very something very special to me. And so I'd love to drive the circuit. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Suzuka. I think the track it looks uh -huh. absolutely incredible. Fast flowing corners, what a racing driver loves. Okay, so what is your like overall sports ambition or the goal, let's say? I mean I want to be a Formula One world champion and that's all I look at at the moment. I, that's where I want to be in a few years, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you have like a role model in your sports life? I've got uh, a few role models um, in the racing terms. Obviously, what Kubitz has done as a driver is absolutely incredible. But also, just looking at his like never give up attitude is something that's not just inspiring to motorsport people, but people all over the world, and it's really motivational. Um, but off like racing, I think. Also looking at Lewandowski as well, mm -hmm. like a uh, career that he's he's brought and performing at his peak and everything like this, it, being so successful is something I think everyone can look at and really be motivated to find. I already know that you also watch Formula One. Yeah. So uh, like, who's your favorite driver now? Oh, uh, it's a tough question. Um, Right now, it's a really tough question. Honestly, when I look at the races now, I just hope for a really good race. Um, I, I just hope to be able to watch a race and there be a really good battle, maybe all down the field. Like you've got your top teams, midfield teams, and then the other teams. It would be really nice to see really good, strong battles between the drivers. Uh -huh. So this is what I hope for. Okay, and when it comes to the championship, who's the favorite? Well, I drive for an Italian team, uh -huh. so um, I guess I'm always around Ferrari fans, but also, I mean, Ferrari has had such an incredible, I guess, career, you could say, in Formula One, motorsport in general, and their team that's really inspiring. So. I'd like to see them come back and win. Um, yeah, this would be nice. Okay, so you say Leclerc, please. Um, honestly, both drivers. It, it's hard to say, they're both incredible drivers, I think. Um, Sainz obviously has had a tough start to the season, but he, he, he'll, he'll fix it for sure. He's in F1 for a reason, he's a very good driver. Um, but seeing them fight for constructors and drivers championships would be incredible. Mm -hmm. And just to finish off with uh, from like a short to middle term, what would be your uh, like the best way to approach Formula One? Which series would you do? Uh, in the series stepping up to F1? Yes. Okay. Uh, from for me now, uh, possibly another year in Freca, FIA, possibly F3, then um, F2 and then Formula One, but it's a lot easier to say that uh, it's a lot easier to say than do. Um, obviously, we've seen some very talented drivers miss out on opportunities, so uh, there's other factors in there, but I'll give it my absolute best and I just won't give up until I'm there. Okay, so fingers crossed and thank you for the. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.